Welcome to OAA Now, your home for Oakland Activities Association news and information. Here's your host, Sammy Taramina. Welcome to OAA Now here. I'm Sammy Taramina, blog around the OAA, the host of Last Three Brain Cells, and the host of Tween Terminas on Ori Neighborhood Television. I'd like to welcome those watching on the local voice on SoundCloud, those watching on Ori Neighborhood Television, and also those watching on YouTube. A lot to look at this week here. Obviously, we're going to recap the Holiday Classic games. I know um, we're filming. We got two other games to keep a close eye on over at Westfield Prep. Um, of course, Bloom Bay Hills is playing in that, and also Harper Woods girls are also playing in that. So, a lot to really look at. Um, a lot to recap. We're going to recap the Motor City Round Ball Classic for the boys. Um, also, the New Bay Anchor Bay Classic. Um, what teams that you learned from you know, from the classics and from the other non-league games and also those who could be in some trouble heading into the, um, heading into league season. Um, let's go to the ladies first. I mean, obviously, you know, I'm always been a guy that, you know, always look at, you know what I mean? You know, ladies first always has been like that model for me. Um, another thing I'm not a big fan of is when I hear games on, um, you know, on the prep or on, you know, or on the, um, other sites I don't like it when and this is my pet pee and I think this is a good pet pee for young announcers is you know when you when you look at teams like Rochester Adams or North Farmington um or West Bloomfield and Bloomfield Hills you can't you can't just say like you know you can't call West Bloomfield Bloomfield um because you know there's two schools there I mean, in West Bloomington and Bloomfield Hills, they're their own district. Um, and I get a little annoyed. I know um, Dan Leach over in um, Livingston County. Um, I got a little annoyed when, um, you know, he called Rochester, um, Rochester Adams, even though there's three, there's three schools in that district. You look at Stony Creek, there's Adams, and there's Rochester. I mean, and Rochester was the one that was playing, and he said Rochester Adams. That, that annoyed me a little bit. Um, and then, you know, and then there's the fact that, you know, there's people that call, um, you know, Farmington, you know, North Farmington, Farmington, and, you know, and I know they want to use the short, but the short wording for it, but for North Farmington, just call them North, you know what I mean? I mean, I've said this before in my podcast many times, so that's my biggest pet pee heading into 2024 is, you know, it's with, for young announcers, to learn, you know, when they're playing opposing schools, you know what I mean? Like, especially if it's like a Rochester school or if it's a Farmington or, a, or a Bloomfield, just, just like, you know I mean? If it's West Bloomfield, just say West Bloomfield. Um, and if it's Bloomfield Hills, you know, can't, you can't compare West Bloomfield to Bloomfield Hills because, you know, they're, they're their own, they're, they're, um, they're different school districts. So, and then Rochester, obviously, um, you just got to know, you just got to know your three Rochesters. I mean, you got to know Rochester High is blue and white. Adams is brown and yellow. And Stony Creek is, um, is navy blue and gold. And, you know, and that's pretty simple, simple. And then, you know, West Bloomfield, obviously, is forest green and white. And then Bloomfield Hills, you know, is black and purple. So, you know, so that's really my biggest pet peeve. Heading into the year is I'm hoping those announcers, you know, announcers, they learn, you know what I mean? And I know they're going to, I know they're going to make mistakes and all that, but you know, and just, you know, you know, like, you know, just like basically like make sure you get your school right. That's what I basically say. That's basically what I would say. All right, let's go to the, um, let's go to the girls basketball recap of the classics. Um, over at Romulus at the, um, West be over at um the um hardwood classic they call it now um I don't know why they call it the hardwood classic, but we had two schools that played in that classic, um West Bloomfield and Clarkston. Um, let me break Clarkston down because to me, Clarkston looked good against um they knocked off Howell they knocked off um you know they knocked off Lake Fenton. They've had to survive some really tough, close games. But when they played Birmingham Detroit Country Day, um, it wasn't close. And that was mind-boggling. Because, you know, when I look at that game and I'm saying to myself, 
Um, you know, I know last year Clarkson lost by 11 to Birmingham Detroit Country Day. Um, but, and you probably would say this Clarkson team was better than last year's team. Um, obviously with Eliana Roback having a year, more year experience. Um, now they did have, Clarkson last year had a really good guard named Hernandez. He, she was really good, really talented player. Um, I mean, like, so he kind of thought, okay, you would, they would be a little bit more experienced. You know what I mean? Like more experienced. They got some good wins on their, on their belt. They knocked off some really good teams. But they play very much Detroit Country Day. Um, and I look at the fact they only scored 23 points. Um, only held the two points in the um, third quarter, which was mind-boggling. And that was stunning. Um, and that score, I think, was 47-23 to 23 in favor of Birmingham Detroit Country Day. Yes, I know Birmingham Detroit Country Day is a very good team. They're a very good team. But... You know, especially with, with the way Clarkson's been playing tight with some of these teams. Um, just stunned with how, you know, they were they were just dominant. Just stunned. Um, and I know I, I read Coach Aaron Goodnow's tweet on X. Um, and, you know, it gets him a lot more focus heading into 2024. Um, the focus has to be there. And that's true, you know. Especially when you have to play a red type schedule, you know, when you're looking at teams like West Bloomfield's in there, um, we know how good they are. I'm going to talk to them in a minute. Um, Rochester. Yeah. They're one and they're struggling a little bit, especially their guard situations. A big concern there. Um, Stony Creek, you know, they're off to a nice start. Um, and then of course, you know, there's, you know, Oxford's off to a 500 start. Um, and then there's Lake Orion. I mean, when you look at the Dragons, the way that they've been playing, um, obviously the wins against Plymouth and Bay City Western are really huge right now for them. But when I look at Clarkson's case, I, I think it's for them, it's going to be is they're going to basically be keeping on Lake Orion um, and I think vice versa because when you look at that situation. When you look at that scenario in that district um, coming up at Water Vermont in uh, March, I mean, that's really where it's going to be. It's either going to be, and I said this on the district preview, it's either going to be painted in green and white or blue and yellow. And, you know, when you look at, when you look at, when you look at Clarkston right now, I think there's some concerns when I look at Clarkston. I mean, they don't have a lot of size. Um, and if Eliana Roback and Brooklyn Cobra both struggle, this team's in trouble. And, and that's really what the bottom line is, is, you know, when you look at Clarkston, is those two girls have to have big nights for them to be successful. And if they don't, they're in trouble. Um, so that's really where it is with Clarkson. That's the bottom line for Coach Aaron Good now is, you know, obviously you got Emily Valencia. You've got some proven experience as well. Got Kira Zorski there. You got Lauren Fish Toller there. Um, but basically, that's where Clarkson is right now. Is they've got, you know, obviously with Roback and Colbert, both of them had that big games for them to be successful. And that's really what it is with Clarkson, especially when you look at the division now. When you look at the red, obviously West Bluefield's West Bluefield. Um, Lake Orion is um Lake Orion's been playing really well lately. Especially when you look at what the what what they've been the last um especially what they've had to come through heading into the year. I mean, there were a lot of questions surrounding them, but it looks like Coach Bob Bridges has got that team figured out. Um Stony Creek's off to a nice start. Um Rochester's been struggling, albeit I mean, obviously the guard situation there. Oxford's been five hundred. They played a tough schedule and I and I do respect that the fact that Oxford's playing that really tough schedule because when you look at that district over there with Grand Blank, I mean Grand Blank had a nice win against some St. Clair Shore South Lake. Um, you know, and obviously we know they got Raven McQueen there, they got Chelsea Bishop there. Um, so Oxford having to play that schedule, having to play in the red, that only has to help that team, you know, because if it doesn't, they could be in some trouble. 
So, you know, when I look at Clarkson's situation, um, you know, for them, it's just basically keep doing what they're doing, focus what they got to do. And I know they got one eye on Lake Orion because that's where the district is. I mean, obviously, when you look at that district, you have Pontiac. Pontiac's much improved. Now, don't get me wrong. Three wins for Coach, um, for um, three wins over there for Pontiac. That is a big improvement for them. Um, for Coach Corey Latt. I mean, that is a big improvement. Um, they're my dark horse in that district. Now, do I think when I look at that district and say, um, do I put Pontiac at the level of Lake Orion and Clarkson? No, I, I don't, I don't see it. Um, now they can be competitive with Kettering and Mott. I mean, obviously they did play water for Kettering, lost a tough one to them. Um, water for Mott, they play later in the year, which is going to be interesting. Um, but when I really look at that district, and I mentioned this, this, that district's still covered in green and white or, or yellow and gold or yellow and blue. I mean, that's really what that district's going to look like over at Water Vermont. Um, and then let's look at the other team who played at Westfield at the, um, Motor City, uh, not the Hardwood Classic, and that is West Bloomfield. And, you know, when I look at West Bloomfield, they kind of look at those scores and they make you feel numb. I mean, they had a blowout win against Chicago Phillips, um, which they looked um, they looked really good. They won the game by 41, 76-35. And then they just went and destroyed Utica Ford in the last game of that. They It was 73-20. to 20. I mean, those scores make you feel numb. They really do. Um, Coach Joe McAllister has done a really nice job of that team. I mean, they got a lot of senior experience, obviously, with both Davis sisters. Destiny Washington, Kendall Hendricks, um, Sherilyn Beals been playing really well for them. Um, but when I look at and I look at West Bloomfield and say, okay, you're blowing these people out, you're blowing good teams out by 40 or 50 points. Now comes a question for me. And I think obviously, and I think this is where it hurt them last year in their loss to Rockford was they didn't have a ton of close games. I mean, they really cruised by in the regular season. They cruised by in the red. And, heck, there's some good teams in that division. But, yes, this is a talented group. But this team hadn't really been tested. I mean, you know, until that game against Rockford where in the state final where it was just absolutely stunning to see, you know, what happened to West Bloomfield defensively, I mean, there is a blueprint to beat them. And, you know, in that game against Rockford really kind of showed the blueprint of that game. It really did. I mean, and if you can get by their full court trap, obviously, obviously, if you can get by the full court trap, um, then you can do some things against West Blue. I mean, but honestly, and I'm not being like a, moaner or a complainer or about this, but I'm just telling you for West Bloomfield, you know, I know it's hard to go undefeated during the season. It's really hard, but you got to allow yourself to get tested in games where, you know, you got to feel uncomfortable. You got to feel, you got to get tested. You know, you know, if you can get yourself tested, um, obviously, you know, and I think this is where, um, and I think this is where, um, you know, obviously playing a tough schedule is supposed to help you, but you're still beating teams, heck, good teams by almost 40, 50 points. I mean, there's going to be a time where teams don't want to play you. And, you know, and right now that's what the case is with West Bloomfield is I don't, there's not a lot of teams that want to play you because you're that good. You're that talented. I mean, you got the, I mean, you got the Davis sisters, you got Destin Washington, you got Kendall Hendricks. I mean, you know, but for me, when I look at West Bloomfield, they've got to get tested. I mean, they've got to be in a close game. They got to be in a stressful situation. I know the motivation for them this year is they want revenge after what happened last year against Rockford. I mean, but 
you gotta you gotta allow yourself to get tested during the season. You know, you look at teams like you know, you look at teams in your own division. You look at Lake Warren; they had a test against Plymouth, the Bay City Western. You look at um, Stony Creek; they had a test against Brighton. They had a test against um, Bloomfield Hills, Clarkson. We know they've been battle tested. I mean, Rochester; they've been battle tested. Um, so for me, with West Bloomfield. I mean, your closest win this year was 18 points against Chicago Butler Prep. And for me, I just think, and I think this is, this is, and I, and I, and this is where I got really, you know, a little bit critical of West Bloomfield last year was the fact that they were not tested um, in, a, in a tough situation. They were tested in December of that of last year in that when they went overtime against Chicago Wendell, um, Against Chicago window, um, got to remember that Chicago Kentwood, where they were tested there, but they ended up surviving that game. And you kind of thought, you know, maybe, maybe this is where West Bloomby can get tested, and they did get tested. Um, but when you look at that schedule coming up, I mean, Belleville could test them in the Martin Luther King Classic. Um, they could, but I just think West Bloomby is a little bit more better. When you look at the t what they did, I mean, they addressed several things. They addressed their depth. Obviously, that was one of their biggest weaknesses last season. Um, but I think they're more better well-rounded this year. But for me with West Bloomfield is I need to see them in a tough, tight, tight game. I need to see them in that. You know, I need to see this team in a stressful situation. I mean, and see how they respond. And I know Coach Joe McAllister, you know, wants to see that. I know he does. And I know the guy very well. I know Coach Jamie Gens very well. But when I look at West Bloomfield and seeing them blowing people out by 40, 50, 20, or 30 points, I mean, yes, we know you're very good. We know you're very talented. But there comes a time where, you know, that you're going to need to really, you know, you're going to have to, allow yourself to get tested in a, in a tight situation, in a tight situation. I mean, like you got to get game reps in that situation because if you don't, you know, then you're going to see what happened again against Rockford where Rockford, Rockford just basically slowed the game down, took the Davis sisters out of the equation, focused on the Hendrick sisters, Hendrick sisters got into foul trouble and that's what happened. So for me, with West Bloomfield, the blowouts are great, but the bottom line is when I look at West Bloomfield is they have got to allow themselves to be tested in a critical situation. I don't think this team's had a bad game yet. I don't think they've had a bad game in maybe over two years. But I'm just saying is if you allow yourself to get tested, um, get yourself in like a like a 10 point game or like a five point game, you know, that's going to help you going down the line. You know, it's going to help you in the postseason. I mean, really that's the case where I'm trying to say here is for West Bloomfield situation is, you know, blowing people out by almost 30, 40 points. Is that going to get you better? I mean, is that going to get you better? I mean, you're going to be playing a lot of kids. But I'm just saying is that's just honesty here. You know, when I'm looking at West Bloomfield scores, blowing out Salem, blowing out Chicago Phillips, blowing out Utica Ford, we get it. You're good. You're legitimately good. But you got to allow yourself to at least get tested. And, you know, and I think until then, you know, and until then with West Bloomfield, I mean, yes, they're the state's top team. But Rockford's going to always be there. Uh, but you got to allow yourself to get tested. And that's my thoughts on West Bloomfield. Is, and that's honesty there. I mean, you know, that's real honesty there. I mean, you got to allow yourself to get tested. You just can't, you just can't like, you know what I mean? Let yourself get blown out. You know what I mean? Like, I mean, like if you blow people out, is that going to get you any better? I don't know. So... West Bloomfield right now, 4-0 on the year. Um, we'll see what happens to them going forward. 
Um, so that's my take on the girls. Uh, on the girls, obviously, when you look at my thoughts on the divisions, obviously, not a lot of changes. Um, obviously, um, we got Bloomfield Hills playing against um against um Lansing Lavery, which that should be a really interesting game. Um, curious to see that interior matchup between Ruby Smith with Ruby Smith. I'm very curious to see how that one goes. Um, and then Harper Woods taking on Plymouth Canton, which is, a, I think it's a difficult match for Harper Woods. Um, but Harper Woods hasn't played in a while. So this is going to be interesting to see how that goes there. So, you know, so we'll see what happens. I mean, we will see what happens. there. Um, let's go to the boys now. I mean, a lot of boys games occurred at the, um, round ball. I mean, we had the round ball to recap. We got a couple individual games, some, Stony Creek got their first win of the year, knocking off Stony Sterling Heights. Um, 25 points from Tyree Smith, 13 points from Trey Walker. Um, good win for Coach Jeff Owen. Um, bouncing back after a rough start. Could this could this be the start of a turnaround? I mean, it would be very interesting to see how that goes. But it could be a start of something. I mean, that's really what I'm looking at is does that win against Sterling Heights turn, you know, do, does that start something for Stony Creek? I mean, obviously, they're, up, they're I mean, they had a rough start. Don't get me wrong. That team's had, I don't know what it is. I mean, everybody looks at the second year, you know, the transition year, you know, it's supposed to turn things around, you know, that's, but it has, it clearly hasn't been, that been the case over at Stony. But maybe that win against Sterling Heights, um, might be the start of something to turn around for the Cougars. Um, but good win for them to start the year off strong. Um, they're clicking right now, and that's that's a good start. That's a good way to to put that with Stony Creek. Really good way to put that. Um, and then we have Royal Oak. I mean, Royal Oak had that tough one point loss to Novi in overtime. Even matchup. I mean, I'll tell you what. Both teams played hard. I mean. Yeah, big game from Camden Clark. Um, obviously, Nick Hoffman had a nice game. Um, I think if you're Royal Oak, you're fine. I mean, I'm not really pressing the panic button on the Ravens. They played real well. I mean, they played, um, you know, they had that tough loss, obviously. Um, but still, credit where credit's due. I mean, you know, they hung tough with Novi. I mean, they played a really, really nice game. Nice game. Um, just a good way for them to, you know, really, um, you know, I think they're fine. I mean, they tested themselves against a really good opponent. Um, Novi this year has played three really good OA teams and they knocked off Berkeley, lost to Troy by two, and then and then they had that um win against Royal Oak. And, you know, you really look at the Ravens this year. I think Coach Aaron Smith's team's better than people think. I mean, just the way that that team is built. Um, I think that team is better than they were last year. And that says a lot. I mean, obviously, when you lose a player like Dylan Hoffman, Davis Arbiter, um, you know, those two guys. Um, and then Rashad Lewis is another one that they lost. And, you know, you really look at... Oh, Rashad Wilson, my bad. I apologize there. Um, so you lose three players there who are really good for your program. And you look at what they've done. I mean, they've really toughened up their non-conference. Um, they have that win against Bloomfield Hills and Seaholm, two wins that were huge for them at the time. Um, obviously, you know, you look at um, you look at where um, both those teams are at. Seaholm's kind of struggling a little bit. Bloomfield Hills. I mean, they got their first win against Detroit Central. I watched that game. Um, obviously, Philip Muhammad had a big game for Bloomfield Hills. Um, Royal Oak's fine. I mean, I think Royal Oak is going to be fine. And I'm not really pressing the panic button on the Ravens. I think they're going to be okay. I, I just think they're going to be more than fine when you look at them. Um, I mentioned with Bloomfield Hills, they won their first game um, against Detroit Central pretty convincingly in the Detroit Public School Holiday Classic. Um, it was, it was a, um, it wasn't close. I mean, that second half, was all Bloomfield Hills. I mean, especially when you look at Muhammad's three-point shooting. Um, Deron Mason had a nice game for Bloomfield Hills. Um, 
Carter Canfield was solid for them. Um, obviously, when you look at for Coach Brian Canfield, that is their um, first one of the year. And, you know, that's a good way. I think he might have found something. But when I look at Boompy Hills, it's like putting a puzzle together, you know, and I think he's, he's try, it's like putting a puzzle together. And I think that's what's going on with Boompy Hills is they're trying to put a puzzle, you know, and then trying to see what pieces fit together. And obviously you have the guard situation figured out with Muhammad and Mason. And that's really been the case. So when I look at Bloomfield Hills with the way that that team is, um, I, I just think they're going to be solid enough to be, they're going to be good enough to be, um, they're going to be right there. They're right in the thick of it. Um, so when I look at the Blackhawks right now, um, they're going to be fine. I mean, they're going to be fine. They're going to be, they're in a situation where, um, you know, maybe they could turn it around. I mean, they got a tough schedule coming up. But that win against Detroit Central, for them, is huge at the time. It's huge for them. So, we'll see how it goes. I mean, off to a nice start. So, we'll see. Then you have the New Baltimore Inca Bay Classic over at, um, over at New Baltimore, Rochester was in this. Um, they took on Gross Point North. Had a really tough six-point loss to them. 60-54. Um, but they bounced back and knocked off Lakeland. I'm really surprised, honestly, with how Lakeland has been this year. Um, I didn't expect Lakeland to be this down with the way that that team is. Um, obviously, when you look at Lakeland... Um, you know, I just didn't expect that. So when I look at Rochester, <laughs> um, Max Moll, Jake Tandy have to have big games for them. They have to. And Max Moll had a big game, both games for Rochester. I mean, he was huge in both their games against, um, Gross Point North and, um, Lakeville, uh, and Lakeland. And they played, um, he played well in both games. He did. So that's credit where credit's due. So for Rochester, they've won two or three. Um, knocked off Pontiac in the um final um before the holiday tournaments. Before the holidays, they knocked off Pontiac in a really hard fought 62 59 win for the Phoenix for the Falcons against the Phoenix. Um so when I look at Rochester, I think them, they're gonna be fine. I mean, I think Rochester's a team that Really, I think they could really, um, they needed that tournament. They needed that. They needed a good way to feel heading into the, um, heading into the turn, heading into the um, new year. And I think, you know, that may be a start when you win two or three. That's a good omen. I mean, your only loss was a six point loss to a really good growth point North team. So, you know, so we'll see where Rochester's at. I mean, we'll really, we'll see where, where they're at. Um, the North Farmington Holiday Extravaganza, um, you know, we look at, I'm going to talk Avondale in the, um, round ball, because Avondale was there as well. Um, when I look at Troy, when I look at the Colts, um, took on Detroit Edison, it was a really tough game. I mean, it was a really even Steven game. We know what Troy with Coach Gary Frolick and his team, they rely a lot on three guys. John Whiteside, Chase Kuyper, and Mason Parker. Mason Parker hit the winning three um, against Detroit Edison. I have the clip on my blog at Saginaw Bay 4650 at blogspot.com. Um, when you look at that game against Detroit Edison, um, it was, I mean, Troy was in control early. I mean, like, and then Detroit Edison fought back. It was basically an even Steven game. It was really tight between both teams. Um, and then when it got late, you know, 68-66, then you see Mason hitting a um, three-point shot. It was a contested three-point shot. So, really, if you're Detroit Edison, there's nothing you could have done there. I mean, you know, with how that game was. I mean, Chase Kuyper had a big game. He had 26. Um... And then he had um, Whiteside and Parker with 16 points each. So when you look at that, 
in that scenario, that's almost nearly almost all your points. So when you look at, of course, um, you know, that's 62 of your, um, of your 68, of your 69 points was by those three guys. So, you know, when you look at Troy, they they bounced back real nicely since that loss to Berkeley. Um, and that was a that was a stunner early on. I mean, I know we had the week you had the game one jitters and all that, but this team, this Troy team's battle tested. Um, they knocked off um they knocked off Novi, um, who's a who's a solid team. They knocked off um they've had some tight games. I mean, they've had some really, really tight games. They've also had some games where they've looked really good. So, you know, when I look at Troy, I mean, this they're a scary team. I mean, they're they're a team that could I honestly, when I look at that district coming up for them, um, I think they can give Birmingham Brother Rice everything they can. Because when I look at that Catholic League this year, I'm not there's a couple teams I'm not sold on. I'm not sold on Orchard Lake St. Mary's. Um, yes, they look daunting on paper, they look scary on paper. Um UD Jesuits had some moments. I think UD Jesuit, honestly, is the best team in that Catholic League. I really do. I mean, considering that they have that win against St. Mary's, um, I like where the I like where Coach Jump Pat Donnelly's team's at. Um, but when I look at the Catholic League, I I just think that you know right now I would say UD Jesuit right now is better than both Orchard Lake St. Mary's and Birmingham Brother Rice. That says a lot right now. Um, and that's not talking more to the Sal either. Um, but back to Troy. Um, I'm telling you, I really think Troy could give Birmingham Brother Rice serious problems. I really do. I mean, yes, they got three guys, you know, and then you look at, you know, three, you know, but those three guys have a lot of experience. They played a lot of basketball. They shoot threes like crazy. Um, Kuiper's a solid rebounder, like a double double machine tonight. I think that game Thursday night against Lake Orion is going to be really interesting between the Dragons and the Colts. I mean, Lake Orion and Troy have always had very tight games. Um, that That's going to be really interesting. Um, And then, you know, and then obviously North Farmington and the, um, their own holiday extravaganza knocked off Flat Rock. Um, I've got concerns with North Farmington when it comes to their starts. I mean, their starts have been like, they've had a lot of slow starts, and I know that's got to bother Coach Todd Negotian. I mean, yes, your team is really good. Yes, your team is solid. I mean, here's what you got, but they get into real slow starts, and then that just really just bothers them. Now, they had a good start against Clarkston, but against Flat Rock, they kind of kept Flat Rock in the game. They kept them in there. And then they pulled away late. I know Landon Williams and Tyler Spratt both got going. But, you know, but the start really didn't, really bothered Coach Todd Negotian. And that's a big concern um, is, you know, if you have, like, these slow starts early on, you know, it, it's, it's good to have the slow starts now than it is in the postseason. Because if you have a slow start in the postseason, you might be in some trouble. I mean, you know, so really when you look at with North Farmington, um, it's just if you're if you're the negotiations, if you're um Coach Pete Mantella, um, you gotta get the slow starts addressed. I mean, like, because if you get into a slow start, you know, and you're gonna have these. A lot of these teams have a lot of good teams have slow starts. And I think that's gonna be something to really really look at going forward is can North Farmington get up? I mean, can they get up like the, um, can they get up to snipe? That's really what it is. The slow starts, you know what I mean? If they can, if they can keep consistent, you know, they keep consistent going along with their business then they're going to be fine, but they've got to address the slow starts. And I think that's really where, you know, coach Todd Negotian has right now. I mean, he's got a great team, great talented team. But they got to dress the slow starts. Um, let's go to the round ball. I mean, obviously here um, we talk a lot about, you know what I mean, like, um, you know, some of these teams here, obviously. Um, I'm going to go with the team that – I'm going to go with Avondale first because when I look at Avondale, um, 
consistency has been an issue for Coach Jared Thomas and his team. I mean, they had that loss to Farmington, um, but then bounced back and knocked off Wild Lake Northern. Um, so when you really look at um, Avondale, I mean, it just comes down to what team shows up. I mean, is it good Avondale or is it bad Avondale? I mean, there were some traces of good Avondale in the round ball game against Farmington, but, you know, there were some times where they had, where they had, um, where they, they just had a lot of bad luck. And I think in that second half against Farmington, they had a lot of bad luck in that game. I mean, they really did. Um, so when I look at Avondale, it just comes down to is consistency. I mean, like what team's going to show up? And I know Coach Jared Thomas, you know, has had a talk with this with his team. I mean, obviously you got a player in Justin Grill Sykes who's very good. Um, but it just comes down to what Avondale team shows up. I mean, that's really what it is. And if you really look at the Yellow Jackets, um, it just comes down to is what type of team that Avondale has and they show up. You know, what type of team shows up? I mean, is it good Avondale or is it or is it Avondale who struggles? And really that's going to be the challenge for Coach Thomas is what team shows up? What is the consistent balance is going to be? And I think that's really what it is right now when I look at Avondale is – can they, you know, can they put it together? I mean, that's really what it is. I mean, can they be consistent? You know, we saw flashes of good Avondale. We saw flashes of, you know, a great Avondale. And then we saw some flashes of bad Avondale. So, you know, so Avondale, they're just going through a lot of consistency. Consistency, um, you know, they got to be more consistent. And I think that's really where Coach Thomas needs to address when it looks at with Avondale. Um, let's go from Avondale to Farmington. Farmington, to me, um, they've won two straight. They're finally, you know, they're finally starting to get it, which is good for them, which is good. They had that win against the Avondale, and then they knocked off Redford, um, Redford Union in a heck of a game. They knocked them off in a heck of a game where, you know, that was a really tight game. I mean, that was really tight. I mean, and that was a four-point game with Redford Union. I mean, I'll tell you what right now. For Farmington to be successful, Greg Grace has to go off. And Greg Grace has done that for Farmington. He had 24 in their game against Avondale. I think he went off. I think he had 30 against um, Redford um, Union. And you look at that Farmington team. When Greg Grace is on, that team is dangerous. When he's not, they struggle. And really, that's what it is with Farmington is... You know, when you look at their losses, the last two losses to Lake Orion and Troy, um, you know, I mean, like, obviously, we know both those teams are solid teams. So when I look at Farmington, this team could win a lot of games. I mean, they can really, really win a lot of games. Um, so when I look at Farmington's situation right now, I like where they're at right now. Just with everything, how they're built. Everything that they're doing, I really like where they're at right now. Um, let's go now. Let's go a little bit out of the round ball. Let's go to the St. Clair Community College Showcase. Um, I forgot to mention this one. Um, Ferndale University took on hand Tramick. Um, it was not a pretty sight for Coach Josh Nick's team against Ham Tramick. Um, this team's going to have to score over 50 to be successful. Um, and they give up a ton of points, which is not good. Um, this is something to address if you are, um, if you're, um, this is something to really address. Um, you really got to look at with them is, you know, you really got to just, um, they got some concerns. I mean, they do got some concerns. Um, so when I look at Ferndale U, rough one against Han Tramick. Han Tramick's a really good team. Um, so it is what it is. I mean, but tough one for them losing that one to a very good hand tramic team. I also forgot to mention in girls, um, Ferndale. Um, Ferndale girls off to a really nice start. Um, knocked off Ann Arbor Pioneer, had to come back and win that game. Um, Coach Keith Paris has done a really nice job 
with the girls program. They had that win against Detroit Cast Tech. Three really good players have really stepped up for them. Um, good win against Ann Arbor Pioneer um, for Ferndale. So forgot to mention that earlier on the podcast um, when talking about Ferndale. Um, forgot to mention them, but Ferndale, as I mentioned, also when I start, they're no doubt the favorite in the um, gold division in the, in girls. So, you know, hats off to Ferndale. Ought to win a really nice start there. Um, apologize to those in Ferndale. Um, you know, I forgot to mention them in the girls basketball segment, so I apologize for that. Um, and then there, and then back to boys. Um, Troy Athens um, had to survive against St. Clair Shores Lakeview, 42-41. Good win for them. Great win for them. I mean, I'll tell you what. I mean, like that. I mean, Lakeview coming out, coming in with a really good record. Um, or I mean, they're off to a nice start. I mean, don't get me wrong. I mean, that team's off to a really, really nice start. Um, Athens went in there at the reeling after losing a couple games. Um, bounced back in a big way. Emmanuel Robinson had a nice game for Coach Dave Scott's team. Um, I think Athens will be fine. I mean, I really think the Red Hawks are a team that they're going to be fine. I mean, I'm not really pressing the panic button or anything on Troy Athens. Um, I think they're going to be more than fine. So we'll see what happens um, with Troy Athens. <laughs> now back to the round ball here. Um, obviously, you look at, um, you know, back to round ball. Um, you look at, there's some other teams. I'm concerned about Harper Woods. They played against um, Adrian. Um, when I look at that game, obviously, they, um, they they had a tough one against a very good Adrian team. I know um, Adrian had a guy um, go off for scoring his 1,000th career point um, at Adrian. I mean, Adrian's a really good basketball team. I mean, there's really no doubt about it. Um, the Maples... You know, they're off to a nice start. They've scored over 60, they scored over 60 points in each of their games this season. Um, so you knew it was going to be tough for Harper Woods. Julian Young had 23 points for the Pioneers. Um, so you know he's going to be relied upon to do a lot. They got others on that team um, for Coach Tawan Porter. Um, but when I look at Harper Woods, um, it just, for them, it just comes down to what style of play that they're going to need to win. I mean, they had a really tough time with Olympia Hills. Um, curious to see how they do against, and they didn't, they, they were in a tight game with Troy. So they're right there. They're, they're really right there. Um, curious to see how their games go with Seaholm, Troy Athens, and especially Lake Orion. Um, <laughs> so when I look at Harper Woods, I think they're going to be fine. But they got it. They give up a ton of points, so that's that's an issue. Um, they gotta address that issue there. Obviously, when you look at Harper Woods, um, Southfield, um, came off a tough one to Dexter. Um, went to overtime, end up losing that one by fourteen. But Coach Terrence, Coach Terrence Porter, his team, I mean, they they fought in that game against the Dreadnoughts. Um. Of course, Dexter, of course, is the alum school of my um, co-host, Ian Locke. Um, so when I look at, when I look at um, in that game, it was tight. It was even throughout. It was a battle between those two teams. Um, but give credit where credit's due, though. I mean, like, Southfield Arts and Tech, they fought in that game. They competed in that game. I mean, they, I mean, like, you just got to give them props in that game. I mean, like. They took him to overtime and just ran out of ran out of steam. Um, but it's a good starting block for A and T, um, especially when you look at how young that team is. Um, to take on a good Dexter team um, and go to overtime with them, that says a lot. So, really, give credit where credit's due when you look at A and T. Um, you know, so that's something to really, really watch for going forward there when it comes to A and T. As um, you know, this this is start the way that they played. Um, you know, so that's credit where credits due with them. So we'll see what happens them going forward. Um, then there's Oak Park. This team I'm really worried about. I am extremely worried about Oak Park. Because 
They lost on a buzzer beater. They had a six-second call against them. They, they had a foul called against them late. And then they go in a tie game. And then they lose on a three-point buzzer beater. This team has some issues scoring. When you're in the red, you got to score. I mean, when you're going against teams like Ferndale, North Farmington, Adams, Clarkston, West Bloomfield, Groves and Groves and Groves in your district, I've got some serious concerns with Coach Duran Shepard's team. Gian Hutchins had a nice game. He had a nice game for them. But the last few games, they've been tight, really tight. Defensively, they've been very good, but it just comes down to offense for Coach Duran Shepard's team. It just comes down to that. And I've got some concerns when I look at Oak Park. I mean, I really got some serious concerns when I look at them. I mean, just, they just didn't have not looked good lately. I mean, they had to survive a buzzer beater. Um, they, they, had, they won a buzzer beater against Warren Michigan Collegiate. Um, and then they got beat, and then they got two blowout losses against them. Um, so, I don't know how to explain Oak Park. You know, they they got to put they got to put more points up. That's really what the bottom line is with them. They've got to put more points because they you know, if they can't score in what and you look at that district now, you know Berkeley's much improved there. Royal Oak we know is dangerous. Groves we know more than capable, and they're on their home gym. So Oak Park. I don't know about this team right now. I just don't know. They've got some questions. They really do. They really do. Groves, I got a lot of concerns about. They've lost five straight. Um, played Detroit Cast Tech tough. Lost that one by 19. I know John Sips and Josh Gibson are back. But still, this team, I'm, I'm worried. I am really worried about this team because life in the red is not as easy as you think it is. I've got a ton of experience being in that division. It is not a fun division. Not fun. And it is, you know, what they're going through right now is life in the red. Really. And they got some tough losses. There are two on there. They got that one at Canton which was tough. Um, then they have that loss, you know, obviously playing Detroit Cast Tech. They played, they played um, North Farmington already. Um, I really think for Coach Mark West and his team, um, I'm worried about the competence factor. I'm worried about the stamina factor for this team. Um, you know, can they, be able to handle life in the in the um in the red and you know the record says otherwise. I know they're putting up points, which is good, but I don't know where this team is right now. I just don't know. They've got to figure it out and quick. I mean, they didn't look good. I mean, yeah, Detroit. It's Detroit Cast Tech. I get it. They're defending Division One state champions. They're a really good team, but we're gonna see what type of team Groves is. I mean, they've got some concerns right now. I've been, I'm really concerned about this team right now. I'm really, really worried about where Groves is right now. Um, so when I look at the Falcons, um, they've got, I mean, I'm, I've got some concerns. Real concerns. Um, then we have Pontiac. Um, Pontiac had that lot fell on a tough one, the Pontiac Notre Dame Preparatory. 75-68. Um, Wade Robson at 34 points for um, Notre Dame Prep. I mean, Notre Dame Prep's a really good basketball team. But Pontiac trailed early. Got back in it. with They got it within six. Um, just couldn't get any closer. Um, they're one in five in their last six. That's not good. Um, so that's something that if you're Coach Andrew Myers, you really got to address. I mean, I, there were some strides. I thought they played better 
in spurts against the against the Fighting Irish, um, but it wasn't enough. And you know, when you look at Pontiac right now, you know they're right. In, they're a young team still. This is still a young basketball team. Um, I think they're gonna be okay. I mean, like I think they're gonna be okay in the blue. Um. I mean, J.J. Claudio is a really good, talented player for them. Um, they got other talented players as well. Um, they had just had that tough loss to um, Notre Dame Prep. They had they're coming off another tough loss to Rochester, falling by three points on their home floor. Um, so Pontiac's been reeling a little bit, um, which is a concern and really. That is a questionable, you know, it's questionable right now. Um, but I think Pontiac's going to be fine. I think they're going to be okay. Um, just some questions that they got to address. I mean, like, you know, defensively, it's a concern. They're giving up way too many points. Um, that's something to address for Coach Andrew Myers. If you can address the defense over there, I think they're going to be fine. And, you know, right now with Pontiac, it just comes down to defensive mindset. Um, really, that's what it is with Pontiac. So, just addressing the defensive mindset, there it's a process for them. But you know, and I know they're going through a transition period as well, and it's got to happen during the year. So, you know, so when I look at Pontiac, um, you know, they're going to be fine. I mean, I think they're going to be more than fine. So we'll see what happens. We're going to see what happens. Um, let's go to Adams. Um, man, there's a lot to like about this team. Trent Lagarde has really taken over that number two spot behind Peter Kardashian. And obviously, that allows a guy like William G to do other things. You know what I mean? Obviously, and that's a good thing if you coach Isaiah Novak, is just the way that that team is played. Um, you got to like where Adams is at right now. You really got to like where they're at. And when you look at Adams' situation when it comes in the postseason, yes, Utica's 8-0. No. They've got some good wins against Romeo, Nitika, Eisenhower. But I'll tell you what, I think Adams gives them problems. I really do. I mean, I've seen Utica play. I mean, they've had to escape some games. Um, But I think Adams... Honestly, I think if you if you put Utica against Adams right now, honestly, I would take Adams over Utica because I trust their guards more. Uh, Trenton Lagarde, I'm starting to, I'm starting to trust him a little bit. Their interior's been getting better. Uh, so when I look at a team like Adams, you know, and, and I think Adams has played a tougher schedule than Utica has. Now, albeit Utica's played Eisenhower and Utica uh, and Romeo, so. But when I look at the way Adams has been playing, Adams, they beat a heck of a Gross Point South team. Gross Point South is a solid team. I mean, they're one of the top teams in the MAC. And Adams had a good win against them. Uh, obviously, you know, Trenton Lagarde, I mentioned, you know what I mean? He has came on lately. He's had games where he went double figures in games. That says something right there. That really says something, you know, to the success of that team is. And you look at Adams right now. Yes, their only loss of the year was to Clarkston. That was a, that was a tight game, too, 52-48. That was a heck of a game. And when you look at Adams, um, I think the sky's the limit for the Highlanders. I mean, the sky's the limit for that program. Coach Isaiah Novak, you know, has done a really good job. Um, you know, obviously taking over for Coach Jared Thomas. Um, you know, he's put his stuff in. They haven't really missed a beat. I mean, they really have not missed a beat. And that says something right there. That really does. So that's a credit to to um to um Novak and his staff. I know they have a lot of veteran proven experience on that staff. I know Mike Stefani, um, who's an assistant over there really well. Great guy, by the way. Um, but when I look at Adams right now, 
that team is just clicking on all cylinders right now. Peter Kardashian is, is having moments. He looks really good. William G, obviously, being more of an intangible player. He can shoot you three when you need it. Um, I'll tell you what. I really like where Adams is at right now when it comes to red. Um, that team, the way that they're playing right now, I wouldn't want to play them in the postseason. I really wouldn't. And they got postseason experience, obviously, getting to the M-State quarterfinal last year. Um, that says a lot. Really does. So, a lot to like with Rochester Adams. I mean, like, just a lot to like with them. I mean, just the way that that team's built. Um, they got depth. Um, obviously, so it's something to really watch for heading into the, um, heading into the, um, 2024 with Adams. I think there's a lot of upside with the Highlanders um, with everything that they've been building on, um, everything that, you know, everything, you know, the experience. I think it's, it's a real nice fit over there, Adams, um, with the way that that team is built right now. And then our last team here to talk about here um, is West Bloomfield. Uh, what? Actually, we got Ferndale, actually. I forgot to talk Ferndale. Let's go Ferndale first. Ferndale, I've got some concerns. Um, they had that loss to UAD Jesuit. But let's not forget, this is the same situation that team was last year. And obviously, when you look at that team last year, you know, they had their struggles early. I kind of criticized Coach Juan Rickman with that schedule. Um, but they bounced back and ended up winning the Division II State Championship. So when I look at Ferndale's case, um, I think the Eagles... With the way that that team, the way that team, yeah, they're a young team. Um, I would say normally relax, be patient with them. But when I look at that district and I see Warren Lincoln in that district, I'm going like, uh oh, that's not a good sign if you're Coach Juan Rickman, because now you have Warren Lincoln in there, and Lincoln's a better team than they were last year. They got a lot of experience, so that's a concern right now. Now, albeit you know, yeah, it's early. We're in January. We're not in the, but we got a month and a half left before the postseason starts. And Ferndale could be in some serious trouble. I mean, like, and I mean that. I mean, Trent and Ruth's going to have to play well. They're going to need their freshmen to step up. Um, But they did not, they have not looked good in their last two games. They have not looked good against West Bloomfield. Then against Orchard, against UD Jesuit. They still got a tough schedule. So, if you're Coach Juan Rickman, that's something to really address. Really concerned about that team going forward. So, you know, so a little bit of a, of a rut for Ferndale. A little bit of a rough spot for them. But they've got to figure it out and quick. I mean, if not, it, it could really snowball real quick. And then last but not least, West Bloomfield. You know, West Bloomfield's a team that really was inconsistent to start the year. I mean... Tough schedule. Didn't look good against East Lansing at all. Um, and then it bounced back recently. Won three straight. Um, beating some really good teams. Beat Ferndale. That's huge. Um, then you go and beat Grand Rapids South Christian, which was nuts. Of course, for Grand Rapids South Christian, honestly, um, you're 0-3 against the OA um, in football and boys basketball. Um, the loss in boys in the state final to Ferndale, the loss in the state final to Harper Woods in Division Four, and then West Bloomfield. I mean, you know, I'm curious to see the direction Grand Rapids South Christian goes if they do have to play an OA opponent. Um, so, but big win at the time for West Bloomfield. Drew Wilson had 30 points in that game. Um, and then they took on the Detroit Renaissance. Won that one in a tight game. Um, balanced scoring. I'll tell you what, right now, when I look at West Bloomfield, they're a scary group. If they play like they're capable of playing, if they play like they've been playing the last three games, West Bloomfield's a, a scary team. They are scary. And I'll tell you what, right now, if they can give Orchard Lake St. Mary's problems if they play like that. They can. Because I've been really impressed with with Orchard Lake St. Mary's, I really haven't. Um, but 
I think what if West Bloomfield plays like they're capable of playing, they're going to give St. Mary's problems. I ain't going to give anybody in the red problems. If they keep playing like they're capable of playing. Defensively, they got to get better. They got to get better defensively. They do. It's a scary team to watch. So, we'll see what happens going forward. All right, before I sign off here, um, obviously, we're getting back in the thick of it. Of course, league play starts again for boys basketball. Um, girls, were still non-league a little bit. So, we'll see what happens going forward. All right, everybody, I'm going to sign off here. Make sure you follow the blog at second. I'll be 4650 at blogspot.com for the latest information around the OA. Um, take care. God bless. See y'all. And see y'all next week. Everybody. And have a safe and happy new year. God bless all. Take care. See y'all. See you next week. God bless all.